Hey boys and girls, it's time for an annual tradition, the fourth grade kickball tournament. You've probably all played kickball or baseball before, but some of the rules that we play by during the tournament are a little different, so listen close. We're going to go through them. First up is the positions. All the yellow stars here are the infield positions. We have first base, second base, third base, and then there's a defensive player between second and third base right there. That's the shortstop. And we have the pitcher and the catcher. The rest of the players on that team will be out behind the bases in the outfield. The team who is kicking, they're going to be lined up right here in their batting order in between home and along third base, along the third base line. That's where the kicking team lines up. So let's talk about how to play. The goal is to kick the ball and then go all the way around the bases and get back to home. When you kick the ball, the ball has to be in bounds or in play. Imagine an imaginary line from home plate, home base that goes all the way to the right along first base and all the way to the left along third base. When you kick the ball, it has to be in between these imaginary lines, like this. If we throw the ball to home plate and the person kicks it and it's in between, that ball is in play and you should run. If, however, the ball is thrown and the person kicks it and the kick goes outside of those imaginary lines, that's called a foul ball. And the ball goes back to the pitcher and the person kicking gets to try again and you get as many foul kicks as you need. We just keep kicking until the person kicks it in bounds or inside those imaginary lines. Now, how to play. When the ball is thrown and the person kicks it and the kick is in bounds, that person then runs towards first base. It's to the right. You're always going to run to the right after you kick it to first base. If it's safe, then you can run from first base to second base and then you keep going to third base and then all the way back around to home base. If you're able to go all the way around the bases, you score a point. You don't have to go all the way around the bases in one kick. You might only get to first base or second base and then you'll have to wait for one of your teammates to kick it and you can come all the way home. Now, there are three ways to get out in kickball. Three ways to get out. The first way is if somebody out in the outfield or the one of the players that's playing defense, if they catch the ball before the ball touches the ground, you're out. So if we throw the ball to home and we kick it and somebody catches it, you're out. The next way you can get out is if one of the fielders gets the ball to the base you're going to before you do. So if this ball is kicked and that person who gets the ball makes it to the base before you do, you're out. The third and last way that you can get to that you get out is if you get tagged with the ball while you're not on a base. Like if the ball is kicked and the person gets the ball and I'm running and they tag me with the ball, you're out. Let's talk about base running. First of all, when you kick the ball, you run towards first base. First base is kind of a special base. It's the only base you can actually run through. When you kick the ball, you can run as hard and as fast as you can, and you don't have to stop when you get to first base. You can actually keep going straight through the base. We call that running through first base. So you can run as hard and fast as you can and keep going. You just have to get to first base before the ball does. Now, first base is a special base. It's the only base you can do that on. You can't run through second or third base. If you run through second base and the person tags you, you're going to be out. But you can run through first base. The next rule for base running, you have to stay in the baseline. Imagine that there's an imaginary line right straight in between each base. You have to run on that line. If the person kicks the ball, and the ball goes right to a defenseman, you can't run all the way around them to try and avoid getting tagged. If the person is standing right in the baseline and they have the ball and you have to run past them in the baseline, 
yeah, you're going to get tagged out. If you run all the way around them, you're out anyway. So you have to stay in the baseline. Next up is force runs. This is a little tricky, but you'll get the hang of it. Sometimes you have to run. Even if the ball is kicked and it's kicked right to the base you're supposed to run to, and you know if you run there, you're going to be out. Well, you don't have a choice. You have to run. Like in this situation, look, there's a person on home base, they're about to kick the ball, and somebody's already on first base. When the person kicks the ball, even if that ball is kicked right close to second base, and you know if you run to second base, you're probably going to get out, you still have to run because that person who just kicked the ball, they're trying to run to first base. And they can't run to first base if you're just standing on it. So, if there's somebody behind you, you have to run. Now look at this situation. In this situation, first base is open. There's a base runner on second base, but there's no base runner on first base. So first base is open. There's no one behind. If the person on home plate, when they kick the ball, they're going to run to first base. The person on second base, they can choose whether or not they'd like to run. If that person kicks the ball and it goes right towards third base, that person on second base doesn't have to run because first base is open. If there was a runner on first base already, they would have to go. If there's somebody on the base behind you, you have to run. Here's a situation where everybody has to run. We call this bases loaded. If there's a base runner on first and second and third base, and the person is kicking, everybody has to run because there are no open bases. We call this bases loaded and everybody has to run. Next up, here are some other rules. Everyone kicks every inning. We don't count strikes and you can't foul out. This is probably different for those of you who played kickball or baseball before. Usually after three strikes we switch and we change. It doesn't work that way in our kickball tournament. You have your team and you have your batting order and every inning every single person on your team is going to kick. So we don't count two strikes, three strikes. Nope. Your goal, if you're kicking, is to have as many people score on your team that inning as you can. And if you're playing defense, your goal is to get as many people out as you can. We're not going to switch after three outs. Everyone is going to kick, and you just try and get as many people out as you can. Now, if somebody kicks and they miss the ball, that's a strike. But we're not counting strikes. Players are going to have as many chances as they can to kick the ball, and they can't foul out. Even if they kick the ball out of bounds accidentally two or three or four times, that's okay. The ball goes back to the, the pitcher, and the person has as many tries as they need to kick the ball in bounds. Now, the pitcher pitches the ball, and they're going to pitch the ball underhand, not bumpy or bouncy. They should pitch it nice and smooth. Each team will have two pitchers, and they'll pitch every other inning. So one pitcher will pitch the first inning, and then on the next inning, they'll switch, and the other pitcher will pitch. But it must be one of those teams' two pitchers that pitches each inning. You have to tag the runner with the ball. You can't throw the ball at the runner to get them out. If somebody's running in between the bases, and you have the ball, and you want to get them out, you have to hold the ball and tag them with it. No leading off. Leading off is where you kind of sneak off the base a little bit before the ball is kicked to get a little head start. Nope, not in our baseball tournament or our kickball tournament. You have to stay on the base until the ball is kicked. No sliding into the bases. You have to run and stay standing up as you come to the bases. No sliding. No baby kicks or bunting, a baby bunt kick. If you kick the ball and it kind of comes off your foot a strange way and only goes a little ways, that's okay, but you can't do it on purpose. No tiny baby little kicks on purpose. Always try your best to kick the ball as hard and far as you can. 
no asking about the score. The teacher at each field will keep track of the score and they will announce the score at the end of every inning. So just wait at the end of the inning and the teacher will tell you the score. Please do not ask about the score in the middle of the inning. No arguing with the umpire or the teacher. Just like in real baseball, whatever the umpire or the teacher says, that goes. That's what they said. Have good sportsmanship. Don't argue or yell at your teammates if they make a mistake. Be positive and tell them they're doing a good job and that they'll do better on the next one. Each teacher will award two sportsmanship awards for each field, one for each team every game. So be a good sport and stay positive and have fun. Closed-toed shoes required. No flip-flops, no sandals. We're going to be kicking kickballs. So in order to keep your feet safe, make sure you wear closed-toed shoes. Please bring a hat and a water bottle. Guys, it's May. It's hot out there, and we're going to be out in the sun almost every day. So make sure you bring a hat and a water bottle to keep cool. And last but not least, make sure you have fun out there. This is a fun thing that we do at the end of the year every year, so have a good time. Here are the fields. When you go out from the school, if you're looking at the playground, field one is all the way in the back on the right side. Field two is all the way in the back on the left side. And then field three is up on the left side next to the playground. And field four is to your right in, by the playground. We will have a poster out in the hall that shows the brackets of all the teams and each day that we'll be playing. Let's talk about how to read this bracket. Say that you're on team seven. Imagine you're on team seven. Now look at round one, the first time we're going to be playing. It's May 20th, round one. If you're on team seven, what team are you going to be playing against? Can you see it? What field are you going to be playing on? Now, on this bracket, the team that's listed first is going to kick first, and the team that's listed second is going to start by being out in the outfield. So, on May 20th, round one, if you were on team seven, you would be playing defense first, you would be playing against team four, and you would be on field three. Let's look at another example. Imagine that you're on team five. Look at team five for May 22nd, round three. If it's round three and you're on team five, what field are you going to be playing on? Which team are you playing against? And are you kicking first or are you playing defense first? If it's round three and you're on team five, you're going to be playing on field four, you're going to be playing against team three, and your team is the team that kicks first. Last one, May 26, round five. If I was on team three, what field would I be playing on? Who am I playing against? And do I kick first, or does my team start in the outfield? We'll look at it here, if I'm on team three, I would be playing on field one that day. I would be playing against team one. And my team starts out in the outfield playing defense first. That's how to read the bracket. A few things about your teams. Your teams have already been predetermined by your teachers. Predetermined means they're already chosen and picked. We've separated you out into your assigned teams. Every team has a team captain that's also already been assigned. Team captains, your job is to help solve arguments and be good examples. Team captains, you're also responsible for bringing out the paperwork each time. An example of a problem you might solve is maybe someone on your team isn't doing a great job playing a specific place, or they don't want to play that place anymore and they'd like to trade with somebody else on your team. Maybe somebody who's playing first base wants to trade to outfield and someone who's in the outfield wants to play first base. They should come to you and you should help figure out if that's a good move for your team. And if it is, 
let one of the teachers know and they can change that on your roster but you're the one who's going to take care of that argument and solve the problems for your team. Okay, here's what we're going to be doing today. We're about to show you what team you're on and your task for today is to get with your team and you're going to choose a team name. Then you're going to make a batting order. What order is everyone going to kick in? And this is going to be the same for your team every inning, every game. You're going to have the same batting order. Then choose field positions. Who are your two pitchers going to be? Who's going to play first base, second base, third base, shortstop, catcher? Who's going to be in the outfield? Fill out your chart. When your team has your team name, your batting order, and your field positions all chosen, bring your papers back to Mrs. Meller so she can keep track of everything and fill out the charts. Have fun today and have fun in the tournament, everyone. <laughs>